Almost rolled it. It's the aspect ratio. I'm not used to controlling things in this aspect ratio. Part way zoomed in. Wow. That's pretty cool.
That is the guild burger. Do, do, do. All right, well, 
We'll see if it's easier to get on board. It should be. Yeah, we still need to push it out a little bit further. All right, one Kerbal to go, I believe. Oh, they're all in there. All good to go.
And that access arm moves a lot from the Kerbals walking across it. We still haven't implemented any kind of locking system with it. Probably be uh, wise to go down that road uh, in the next generation of the uh, tower for sure. Got a lot of things that we need to change about this tower. But like I said, it works, so we're currently using it. Anyway, we're good to go ahead and uh, retract the access arm. Have you tried and tried RSS slash RO uh, RP1? Maybe. Oh, you're talking the mods. RSS is real so yeah, real solar system. RO no, no we have um, the scales all whack on that. I don't like it at all. Yeah, and realistic overhaul is not to our liking either. There's a lot of issues with that that are like, eh, that's a deal breaker for me. Mm. They have several aspects that I just, yeah, can't get over.
All right, we need to get into our launch window now. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of time acceleration going down. That's uh, that's actually close enough. Might be a little bit too far in. Anyway, we are in an acceptable launch window. Let's go ahead and pl program the flight computer here. Make sure that's programmed properly. Okay, we're looking for a uh, throttle limit, 58%. Yeah, it's actually screwed out everything. Interesting. Negative 180 to negative 180. We want auto stage 0.7. Okay. 2.1116. 50 degrees. And an ending. Seven. Like that. All right. Flight computer is programmed properly. The staging is green. We are in the launch window. Hmm. Excuse me. Alright, let's do it. Initiate launch pole. Confirm launch window. Yes. Confirm pre-launch checks. Yes. This flight doesn't have All one. All flight controllers. <laughs> Give me a go, no go for launch. All stations, going to go for terminal count, beginning with Mission Assurance. Mission Assurance is go. DC. DC is go for terminal count. GC. GC is go. SIS-1. SIS-1 is go. SIS-2. SIS-2 is go. CC. CC go. NAV. NAV is go. Flight software. Flight software go. Mission no, software. Mission software is go. IT. IT is go. Recovery. Recovery go. RC. RC go. OSM. OSM go. Rock. Rock is go. LC is go. DC, you are go to enable the terminal count auto sequence. All stations, terminal count auto sequence is enabled. Be aware of the launch clamps when they go, they're really loud. Alright, T minus 17 seconds. Guidance is internal. T minus 10 seconds. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, Three, two, one, launch. <laughs> Lift off Endeavor. We've cleared the pad. We've cleared the, well, of course we've cleared the pad. We cleared the tower. <laughs> 30 meters a second. Forty. Approaching roll. We go for roll. Seventy meters a second. We go for a throttle up. Ninety meters. One hundred. Approaching pitch. We go for pitch. Fifty meters a second. T 
250. Vehicles transonic. First stage booster flame out separation and main computer override. Approaching Mach 2. Mach 2. Flame out. Steady as she goes. All right, we are at 120 kilometer apoaps going to 270. 150. Pretty solid. 1500 meters a second now. 190 going to 270, 200, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and shutdown. All right, SAS off, we are go for the pirouette maneuver. Oh, Jack. That was pretty decent. We got to get better at cleaning it up on the other side, but our, our angles on that were really good. Okay, the pirouette's complete. We are in position, ready for the orbital insertion. All right, up we go.
go for external tank jettison. Main engine shut down. Ohm's computer engage. What is the Ohm's computer control? Seven. Okay. Ohm's computer engage. RCS off. Prograde marker, please. Go ahead and open up those payload doors. All right, we are go for the orbital insertion. Hit it. to get away from me here. No, you don't. Come back. Okay, so Space Shuttle Endeavor is now in orbit, and uh, all things are, are in good shape at the current time. Let's see, uh, yeah, we need to target the ISS here. And what is our inclination? Wow, we're really good on the inclination. What is our personal best for the inclination on launch? Twelve point five meters. Twelve point five meters is our personal best. Let's see how close did we get it. Uh, we want to match planes. Yeah, we didn't beat it. It was good. It wasn't wasn't that good though. Darn. All right. Well, go ahead and turn to the inclination correction burn and. Prepare for the inclination correction burn. <laughs> so enjoy the chicken dance. All right, we're on the node. Go ahead and go ahead and hit it. There's our inclination correction burn. Now, uh, we're way too far out. 
far out, man. Well, here's what we're going to do. Let's go ahead and get a maneuver over at this periapsis. Since we have to... We have to go out anyway. So we'll increase the apoapsis out there and... Bring it a little bit further out. Something like that. There you go. And uh, we'll circularize on the other side. that maybe a little bit back yeah more if anything actually okay all right go ahead and turn to that first node and let's uh, get into this home and transfer Okay, hit it. Alright, go ahead and execute that next node. Let's get her done. pretty sweet. This is like virtually one of the last modules, like serious modules to uh, install on the station.
All right, now we can wait for the ISS to catch up to us. Dangerously low on electricity, Jack. Come out of this time acceleration. We've got to do something here. Um, yeah, we're going to need to spend a little bit more. We need to get there a bit quicker. flying sideways here. All right, we should be able to get there a little bit faster now. Uh, definitely want to keep a real close eye on that electric charge. Two thousand five hundred. Two thousand four hundred. Two thousand three hundred. I'm starting to see it. 
Yeah, okay. Ooh. Right over there, huh? One point seven, one point six, one point four, Point seven, close enough. All right, go ahead and turn to that node. Okay. Okay, and then go ahead and plot the match velocities at the closest approach. Go ahead and turn to that node, and we'll fly it in ourselves. So we'll be going 22.4 meters a second. We got uh, T minus 22 minutes, 12 seconds till we get there. That's not scary. We will tell you what it's not. Yeah, it's visible right there. We're just past 90 meters out now, or 90 kilometers rather, 90 meters. <laughs> Fifteen minutes out now. Ten minutes out. And before we get into render distance, we'll get an F5. Alright, there it was. Let's go ahead and on with it. 10 kilometers out now. T minus 6 minutes. Seven kilometers, five minutes. Twenty two point four meters a second relative. Two meters. Okay, coming into render distance now. Put us on the retrograde marker. We're gonna burn a little bit of this speed as soon as the game comes back to us. Oh, that's right. Okay, we're we're hitting render distance right now. T 
10 meters a second. We honestly have no idea where we're supposed to be going with this. I mean, we know where the payload goes, but where are we supposed to be docked during this whole maneuver or this whole uh, delivery? I do not know. I have no idea. Well, we know one thing. We can't be docked to PMA2 because it gets moved so why is my text on this screen so small there we go Havkun morning From Germany. How's it going in Germany? And we're almost to our closest approach now. And nine meters to burn out, and then we need to figure out where we're going to dock. You know what I'm thinking? The the best place to dock would actually be the PMA too, because that's that's absolutely where we're going to dock, and we'll just relocate the. Um, We'll relocate the PMA after we leave. So let's go ahead and get ready for docking here. Extend the tunnel. velocity Okay, um, what do you want to do? How do you want to go about this? Um, 700 meters out still. Let's go ahead and turn towards the target and just get one last thrust towards it with the liquid. And then we'll come in on, on the peroxide, as it were. I mean, they're Werner engines, but still, you know, I think you all get the idea. Y'all. Did he just say y'all? Did he just say meow?
We. Did you know you can see your distance to your target in the lower left corner? You mean over when, if you're in the... No, I didn't know that. I don't see anything down there. But the normal crap... I guess if we're in the map or something, is that the... Uh Maneuver... I, I don't even know. I don't even know how to utilize it at all! I have the faintest idea. Yeah, we're 600 meters out now. Go ahead and switch over to the station. See where she sits. Okay, so SAS is getting it turned. Going to get it turned. Gotta flip it completely around. But yeah, the way I see it here is the the easiest way to do this would be to dock right to this docking port, which will be facing Nadar once this thing's on its proper attitude. So we'll we'll have to pass it, come back up from underneath, and dock to it with our payload bay facing port, just like the last mission. And then we'll be right there. Maybe that's the thing to do. Or take a look at this uh, payload. What am I? Okay, so here's the other thing. Is that when this comes out, it's going to have to flip around. Yeah, it still would be easiest. I mean, we'll be right there. I mean, we can do practically... Practically half of the turn in the payload bay. Shouldn't be a problem at all. No, it still seems like the best option to use that uh, PMA-2. And it'll be the last time that we'll be able to get to use it because, uh, like, right after this mission, it gets relocated to the end of, uh... I don't even know if the shuttle ever docks or anything ever docks out to that PMA-2. I mean, they moved it for a reason. So, it must. Personally, I, d I don't know. Where it's going to be located seems... Maybe it'll make more sense when it's out there, but it seems like it'd be really cramped. I'm trying to bring a, bring a shuttle or really anything out there. It seems like it'd be really cramped. Um, we've got a node, evidently. Go ahead and get rid of that. Clear the flight computer. We don't want any nodes going on here. We're done with all that. Kill the staging as well. 
Okay, 470 meters, going two meters a second. We can definitely get more speed into this. SAS is on. Go ahead and hit it. Test those retrograde thrusters just to be sure that we can bleed this, we can kill this speed fast enough. Yeah, we should be fine. Here, we're actually even, like, targeting directly at the station. It still needs to turn, too, so gotta be aware of that. RCS off. At this point, let's go to the um, re-entry computer, which I believe is six, yeah? That'll give us a better thrust of the docking thrusters. 380 meters out now. Okay, so, yeah, the re-entry computer. Let's go ahead and switch to the re-entry computer for the docking or this approach. Three hundred fifty, three point three meters a second. And it's got a long way to turn as well. Tranquility module, man. Damn. Okay, we're approaching pretty quickly here. Let's go ahead and uh, kill some of this velocity. RCS on, docking mode on. So far, so good in Germany. Uh, not much work because everything's closed. Yeah, I feel that it's about time uh, we're going to start to see the economies come back to life. People are going to be really interested in experiences, in my opinion. People been really cooped up and uh, uh, whatever excess income or disposable income they have, they're going to definitely be... Um, there's going to be a pent-up demand to spend that in ways that are extremely fun, you know, theme parks, that kind of stuff is going to bounce back to life. May even go into a, a, a boom period, perhaps. It's, I don't know. It's, uh, it's hard to... I, I, I don't know. But yeah, things uh, definitely feels to me like things are starting to look up. And uh, it's safe to get, uh, get the world r rolling again.
But that's what I'm betting on. I haven't decided how I, uh... How I would like to place that bet, or exactly when I want to pull the trigger on it. But that is my that is my prediction for uh, for the near future. That um, experiences experiences are going to bounce back in a big way. Look up, France is back in lockdown for a month. Really, Italy also? No kidding. Wow. Well, where I'm from... Like, if people are... It's, it's much different. But, of course, we're not, like, a real place either. I live in, like, the land that time forgot. And here, I'll go to the, I went to the grocery store earlier and, like, there were people all over the place just willy-nilly without masks and their whole family running around like nothing was nothing. And it's been like that for quite a while. That's, I don't know. The numbers may tell a much different story about what's going on here. But in my experience, it looked like everything so far looks, I mean, right now it looks like nothing ever happened here. How are those firing? There shouldn't be any mono propellant turned on. How the hell? Check out these thrusters here. There are, these are RCS thrusters. These are mono propellant thrusters and the only fuel are in these two tanks which is turned off that can't be true yeah it looks like we've got we've got another 10 mono propellant oh okay there's mono propellant hid inside of the cupola I never thought of that sneaky sneaky mono propellant Well, here's what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and turn that off, because we will want that. And we were just about to thrust and kind of kill the rest of this velocity. Give the station plenty of time to go ahead and make its turns. It's still got a long ways to go. Germany will decide today if they close everything again. My god. There's another wave? No kidding. Insane! I keep hearing that, I swear. Like, like I said, around here... You would think things are... The feeling around the town here is, is much, like, positive, very positive, in my opinion. And has been for some time. 
But yeah, every time I I look at the the news or numbers or whatever, it's like it tells a, a much different story. But I'm also yeah, let's not go down that road. We're not gonna get political. We're just going to nip that in the bud right now. 117.2 meters out. Let's just chillax over here in our shuttle. Let the station do its turn. Are we close enough that it's going to go ahead and do this turn on its own? Sometimes I seem to recall it's like you have to be within like less than 300 or 100 meters for the SAS to actually just automatically control it. So, yeah, it didn't look like we had much torque going into this thing. It's just floating out here, but there's the prograde markers actually on the ball now, so. Yeah, I just don't want the damn shuttle to float too close and smash into it, you know. I wonder if we're actually going to clean up the uh, autonomous stuff on board these little miniature external stowage platforms that they've called the ELC 1 and 2. Kind of looks cool with all that junk on there. I mean, that's more or less what they really look like. They got crap all over them. Might as well just keep it like that. So gung-ho to remove all of that, uh, those pieces. I mean, to remove them in the end would be something like almost 30 pieces all in because there's going to be four of these in the end. So it's actually quite a, quite a lot of parts, but if it's, uh, 
I'm cool to leave them on. I'm I'm keen to leave them on there. We'll suffer the frame loss. We need to work on a map of the speeds for re-entry on the shuttle. That's another thing's kind of uh, went the went the wayside, but that would be that would be wise. As we're always kind of guessing. It seems like oh, okay, once we're past the the bay, we expect to be going like 2,200 meters a second. And like the different different zones or uh, features across the map that we can easily identify, we we need to use use those in order to control our uh, the rate we bleed out the speed better. We need to mark all that crap down, get it all in uh, in our flight plans. We have the flags that we use for uh, for the reentry target but we need to take the next uh, the next level for this uh, when we do this re-entry on on this one we'll definitely take uh well that's something that I can actually do yeah we've got a few like really good re-entries and if I just go back through our vods find like uh, the re-entry the best re-entry out of all of them and uh, go through that. Then have a, a list that I can say, okay, at this point we should be going this speed and adjust our pitch accordingly to bleed out whatever speed. We could get really good at this. And get really good at those re-entries. It's about the last thing on our shuttle that's you know, it's just a little bit dicey. We we kind of play it by ear. And we've been good. I mean, I would have to say um I I believe I could be wrong. Oh wait. We've landed every one of the shuttles. The last 3 shuttles, I'm pretty sure we have we have landed them all. But I think one one or two of them may have actually got overshot and we had to do an emergency landing on the island runway but again if we had uh, a plan of attack for the speeds and not just kind of judging it the mark down in stone then we would be much better
Okay, it's on the prograde marker, and now it's uh, getting the roll. Endeavor is just chilling out here. Yeah, I guess we'll take this opportunity to remind everybody, if you guys are new to the channel, make sure you follow. Follow us on Twitter, subscribe to us on YouTube, the links are down below. We appreciate all of the support and you guys coming and just chilling with us. For our Kerbal Adventures. We, of course, do a hell of a lot more than just uh, build the International Space Station. It's just one of the more... Uh, complicated... Um, endeavors that we've ever embarked on. But we do also have a rather large ongoing quest to um, to colonize all of the planets and we currently have uh, we've got a big infrastructure around Kerbin that we've been working on the airports with the goal of being able to have an infrastructure of airports that we can fly to and refuel our aircraft in a uh, and get a hundred get a, all the way around the planet be able to do a, a complete flight all the way around the planet and that's uh, that's been an ongoing thing we got uh, quite a few airports built um, we have uh, colonization projects on large colonization project on Minmus got a colony on Mar on on m the moon Duna Ike Drez and Eve currently and of course want to expand that the big thing that we've done about our colonization project, the big thing to note about our colonization project is that um, we did it with virtually 100% reusable. We didn't um, we didn't shed equipment like at all through the transfer vehicle, the all of the launching of, of the different modules and, and uh, all the different equipment um, it's all been done with reusable Falcon Heavy boosters, Falcon 9 boosters and all kinds of other stuff that's it's always been 100% reusable so which is a, a lot of fun man we haven't launched a Falcon Heavy in a long long time oh my god our Falcon 9, since we, we've gone to, like, our evolution of rockets has basically been uh, Generation 1 Falcon 9. And then we moved on to, once we accomplished that, then we moved on to Generation 1 Falcon Heavy. And once we accomplished that, then we moved on to Falcon Super Heavy with Starship. And then once we accomplished that... We kind of, we went backwards into uh, we went back into the Falcon Heavy, and started making modules to put into that in order to do a colonizing project. And once we did all of that, um, that's kind of when we uh, we started to do the airports, and uh, started to do a little bit of you know aerodynamic stuff. And then we got into the ISS, and the ISS has been like 
almost completely what we've been uh, wrapped up in for quite a while now. And it's a big project. It's a big project indeed. But in doing all of the uh, the ISS, not, not only is the, the ISS a big project in itself, but you have to have so many support vehicles, so many different uh, vehicles and programs in order to build this. First off, you've got the shuttle, which in itself is a, a huge undertaking. Um, and then, you know, you've got your Soyuz, your Progress, your uh, Proton, all of those different systems we had to build in order to get this get the station up and and off the ground so to speak and literally but part of that was the dragon program like we had to um or we took a, a large uh, kind of break from everything and went to build our our uh, like third generation dragon capsule um, along with the newly or, or like I, I want to say it's the third or fourth generation probably third generation uh, Falcon 9 booster with the the dragon the new dragon capsule And that was a lot of work there. Um, Now the Falcon 9 Dragon program is is very cool. Seems as though we're starting to drift quite a bit. 200 meters out now. Turn, you bitch! Mm 
Yeah, we need to also bear in mind the next time we do a Soyuz launch um, that we don't include, I want to say, zero. Key zero needs to be... Key zero needs to be uh, reserved for the for the uh, Zvezda control front point. That way we can maneuver, we can go around in the different capsules and compartments and actually look out the windows without it changing our control front point to whatever window we happen to be looking out of. We can just hit zero each time and it will automatically, no matter what we're looking out, where, you know, and this capsule that's facing port, it doesn't just control that and then try and turn us to the prograde marker, that kind of thing. Be assured it will stay put. But I do believe we did something with the Soyuz where we keyed it, we keyed it to zero. I can't remember what it was. I think it may have been like a drain valve or something but we'll take a definitely take a look at that the next time we do a Soyuz I do believe these two Soyuz right here are affected by that goofiness that we did that was a mistake shouldn't have done that station still takes a long time to turn.
turn on this is brutal. We're gonna have to run tests on this. The turning mechanism on this leaves something to be desired. When we have the shuttle here, at the same place where we're about to dock to it before, like the whole station, we could turn it so fast. It has to have been, it has to have been the leverage in the back because it turns like absolute crap now. Back to turning like crap.
<laughs> okay, yeah, it does look like we're on 90. Okay, 90 it is. Damn, it really feels like parking a car at this point. Like, it's so tight. Everything is so, so tight that it's... It... <laughs> it's just like, like lining up between the lines and the, the whole nine yards.
All right, 4.3 meters out from the docking port. We are very close. There it is. Captured. All right, we're on the prograde marker. Find controls off. Docking indicator off. Docking mode off. Okay, everything seems to be on the level. So what we need to do next is the payload needs to come out and flip around so that this end mates with this docking port over there. And that's, uh, that's the next goal. Should be easily, uh, easily done. Go ahead and get an F5 right here. Everything looks okay. And, uh... Yeah, we need to uh, move some crew off of the shuttle itself. Let's go ahead and get these guys on board the station. Stretch their legs and say hi to the other crew and Yeah, the decals are pretty sweet.
Well, there we have it. There was our launch. We got ourselves a um, a re-entry of our last uh, last mission. I think it was STS-119. And we got this one launched up here and uh, are ready for the, uh, the install. We need to do an EVA in order to break all of the struts and get them, uh, get the payload unsituated from the payload bay. So that's, uh, one, that's one EVA that we get to knock out and then, uh, we can do the install and then after that we can do a re-entry of the Endeavor shuttle. But we're gonna go ahead and call it right there for this evening. Uh, but don't go anywhere so we're going to go ahead and host up another Kerbal player, drop in on somebody new, say hi and spread the love a little bit. Uh, I encourage everybody to click the follow button with me and uh, click the follow button here on this channel. Subscribe to us on YouTube and follow us on Twitter. The links are down below. And as always, we appreciate all of the support. I'm just the chillaxin coming and hanging out with us. And uh, we hope to catch up with you guys for more Kerbal Space Program when we get into the install of the Tranquility Module. Hopefully tomorrow. So until then, stay cool, stay away from the voodoo. Have a good night, guys.